Okay, this is the uh, meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen um, on um, October 28th at 6 p.m. Uh, I want to let everybody know that we're being videoed by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by our residents and the public. First item on the agenda is the, the minutes for the October 15th meeting. Bob, you can handle those? Well, I thought they were great. Uh, well, you weren't here, so that's right. Uh, that's right. But, so, so I would make a motion that we that we accept the minutes. Yeah, there, were, there was one small issue? thing in there when you, the, in the discussion of the conversation regarding the speed bumps. Yeah. Um, so Cantor would like the uh, fourth sentence from the bottom. Cantor would like the town to meet with the pleasants about the situation, but said the owner of the property would probably not want to come in for a meeting. That was Mr. Sweet that said that the owner of the property would not want to okay. come in for a meeting. Um, so, Tom, do you have a note of that for Lisa, who's yeah. stepped out? But aside from that... That was Ron who said that? Yeah. Ah, okay. I think they would, and I think we should, that that's the way you... That's the best way to go at this issue. So sit down. A chat. A sit down. So with that change, fab. you're ready to... You, would you yes. second that? Yes, I would second minutes. with that, with that uh, slight addition, uh, deletion Great. change. Great. So I vote aye. Yes, yes, I do. So you're all set. Yes. Okay. My next item on the agenda, we have three event, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for seventy-four thousand eight hundred fifty-one dollars, a payroll warrant of one hundred and fourteen thousand sixty dollars, and a payroll deduction warrant of twenty-eight thousand five hundred and fifty-six dollars. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, next item of meetings attended by select board members. Philip. Um, yeah, there's several several school committee meetings. Um, contract negotiation still with our union. A strategy session with management. Um, I know I'm missing various flotsam and jetsam type meetings. The Thursday went. I, I was able to attend the Thursday. Town Academy, which I did hear somebody in the parking lot saying, another night of the Con College of Conway Knowledge. Ooh. I thought that was cute, and you would appreciate that. Thank you. So there you go. That was cute. So my meetings this, uh, since last meeting were the two town academies. And uh, I, I agree that people that are coming are enjoying them and learning a lot. I thought the last one with Ken and Bob and Gemma was really good. I mean, a lot of people, I, I think, realize the breadth of what they all do. It was that good. good. Steady laughter throughout. I, that's what I appreciated about that particular session. It was very good. Bob likes to interject a lot yes, of yes. humor in his talk. Okay. Uh, let's see, what did I have since last time? I had. Uh, FERCOG uh, Finance Committee meeting, a FERCOG Council meeting. Uh, I had two Town Academy meetings. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to the last one because I attended the uh, Franklin County Selectmen's Association uh, meeting up at uh, Greenfield Community College. Uh, and sorry I missed that one, Tom. I understand it went very well. I spoke to, to Bob Baker and he said it was good. It was good. Um, so how was the selectman's meeting that I, I had to choose, you know, we all, we, we chose Tom, so. Well, it was, it, 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 um, it was a presentation by the, um, by the president of GCC. Yeah. Um, and it was mostly about um, how do we, solve some of the problems in Franklin County uh, as far as education is concerned, about preparing the workforce for some of the jobs that are out there, about some of the programs that GCC 
has now and will be instituting to, to meet that challenge. Um, very interesting meeting. Uh, it was uh, attended by 30, 30 or yeah, so, which, which wasn't too bad. Um, but uh, yeah, it went pretty well. Uh, I'm sorry you guys missed it. Uh, again, I wish I it had ended sooner so I could have gotten it over to the academy, but it, but it kind of went on. Yeah. One of those things that, you know, it's supposed to start now, but it didn't start, and then it ran over and it was kind of, you know. Well, was there any talk of the uh, potential relationships between GCC and municipalities, towns in the region? Um, the um, the president was very interested by the fact that, that she was invited to talk to the selectmen and that the selectmen turned out, uh, had a good attendance, and um, she's interested in knowing more from the towns on, on what GC can do, GCC can do. Um, but again, you know, they're kind of kind of limited in, in what their scope can be, but they're looking for input from, from the towns. So, yeah, it was it was a good meeting. Uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment? Uh, no public comment. Okay, that's good. Old business. Uh, well, actually, I do have a public well, comment. Well, you you're here for a specific reason, well, though, I, I, right? My comment is on something else. Okay. okay. Would you like to make a public comment, Janet? Yes, I would. Okay. I would like to ask a question. Okay. About whether the town has been approached to provide funding for a pollinator gardens at the Audubon property. Has the town been approached to provide funding? For pollinator, pollinator at the Audubon. Project. Yes. Okay. So that's not one of the ones that you you're going to fund with. Uh, with. No. Uh, well, I mean, we're not. Uh, no, that's not that's not part of the Tony Borton project. That's he he gave <clears throat> he gave a heads up about part of a pollinator thing that he's potentially interested in. And where is that? I believe his land or above it and Okay. Um, okay. That's all I know. This is on the Audubon uh, hills that yeah. I understand Sue Bridge is uh, working on and uh, seeking funding unless is, is, is that through the Friends of Conway? Yeah, well um, sort of but I think she I mean I don't know that they raised any money and so I, I don't thought Sue was talking about CPA funding. Uh, okay. Well, t town funds um, can't be spent on private projects. So whether it's nonprofit or not, so I haven't heard about that in particular, but I would not expect to. Okay. Okay. I don't know that that's. I mean, no, that's if, not exactly. It, it can be spent on a private project if it's for a public purpose. Right, and there are many CPA funds yeah. are, are awarded to nonprofit oh, organizations. Yes. Yes. For a public purpose, so pollinator. Yes. Would be yes, considered a public purchase. But you know, that would be up to the that. Audubon has two. Okay. Well, in any case, I have. They're on both sides of the road, the and the hay field, I think, is very important to the town uh, agriculture. With the what's being hay. Pardon mm -hmm. me. Okay, that's my yeah. end of my. Yeah. Sue hasn't brought it to us. Public comment. Yeah, we we have not. Okay. I have not heard anything on it, Thank you. and you have not heard anything. On it. No one has okay. asked me for any funding. Okay. <laughs> or, Okay. So, I, I don't know whether they've been to the Community Preservation Committee or right. not. Right, that's I think where they would go. Uh, they might, I, I don't know whether the open space plan has anything about uh, pollinator habitat in it. Uh, so they could also go to your committee for funding. We don't have any, but they probably know that. But. You have lots of money. Well. <laughs> <laughs> to spend on uh, implementing yes. the open space plan. That's, that's right. I, that's right. That's, that's right. why I said if the that's open right. space and plan then, had yeah. pollinator habitat yes. in it, then you well, could. I'm sure the update yeah. of the open space plan will. You know, the ah, update it's on a good. cycle yeah. of I think that's updated. next year it gets revised. Revised, yeah. and I'm sure. Okay. All right. So that's, that's yes. Thank all you. you have, Jen? Yes. Okay. On the public part. On the public, right. Right. On the on the public comment yes. part. Yes. Okay. So now we can move on to old business. Our right, first item under old business is the uh, 
municipal vulnerability preparedness grants. What do we have on that, Tom? Uh, we have Chris Curtis, who's in to talk about a potential uh, coordination with Deerfield on the project. And I think we're expecting uh, Diana Schindler as well, who's not here yet. Is she, is she still expected to? Well, I think we should go ahead. Okay. Okay, Chris, come okay. Thank you. So, um, and, and where are you from? I'm from Deerfield. Okay. Um, I live just down the road a little bit. Um, and I've uh, been working as a consultant for the town of Deerfield on their municipal vulnerability preparedness planning effort. Um, and to this point, Deerfield has gotten um, an MVP grant for planning, as you did, I guess, mm -hmm. um, and got designated as an MVP community. They were actually the first one designated um, in the Commonwealth. And since that time, we've done two action grants and gotten those both funded. Um, so I think we've gotten close to half a million dollars worth of funding under the MVP program for Deerfield to this point. Um, and it's been a really good thing for the town because, as you may know, there's there's a 25% match, um, but for doing things like culvert mm -hmm. replacements and right. land protection, you can't find a better deal than that anywhere in, the, in Massachusetts. It's, yeah. it's an amazing program. So um, if, you do, if it's okay with you, I'll just kind of take you through a couple of things that we've been doing and okay. what we're thinking about doing, and I'd like to invite you to, to really essentially join us um, in that. So um, first MVP action grant that we got, we did um, engineering and design for a culvert replacement on Mill Village Road, which is the one kind of near Deerfield Academy, if you, if you know that mm -hmm. area along the Deerfield River. Right. Um, so we did design for that. Is that where there's big gardens down one side? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's, yes, there's a lot of flower growing yeah. and stuff there, yeah. and, and the road has been sort of out for a couple of years now. The culvert collapsed and yeah. been kind of a mess. So it's been a high priority for the town to try to get that fixed. Um, so we, we finished that um, this year. Uh, we also updated the town's floodplain zoning, which was you know really out of date. It hadn't been updated for 35 years or something, mm -hmm. and brought it up to standards that are the you know, National Flood Insurance Program standards that really are necessary for people to continue getting flood insurance and, and so forth, um, and just kind of made it state of the art. Um, so that was our second grant. Our third grant, which we just got started on and, and received um, a, about a month and a half ago, is to actually construct the Mill Village Road culvert replacement. Um, and then there's another culvert uh, on Kelleher Drive, which is right in the town center. Of, um, floods out um, a large part of the town when there's major rainstorms because it's undersized and it's badly designed. So we're going to design replacement for that this time around. And then we're doing green infrastructure projects in the center of town. We're going to do um, some rain gardens and some tree box filters, which are basically trees that collect stormwater mm -hmm. in a basin um, and keep the, the runoff from getting into um, this bloody brook that runs through the center of town and it causes a lot of flooding. Um, so we have Deerfield's issues are primarily focused on flooding as they probably, as I think I understand they are in your, your community as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing that work. Um, we're also looking at the floodplain in, on the Deerfield River working with the Franklin Land Trust to do a, a sort of a strategy to prioritize which parcels of land are most important to protect and, and sort of maintain that flood storage capacity in the, in the area. Um, and that's a great project because Franklin Land Trust is providing all the local match for it, so the town doesn't have to provide anything for that. Um, and then we're doing a flood evacuation plan um, in the event that the uh, Great River Hydro dams have some sort of cat catastrophic failure or a major release, something like Hurricane Irene. Mm -hmm. um, what to do about getting people out of harm's way, especially in the um, old Deerfield area, which is really heavily threatened um, by any kind of a major flood. Um, but if there was a dam failure, they'd be under like 30 feet of water there. So it's, it's a pretty important issue to be prepared for. Um, and then we're going to do a townwide climate resiliency forum um, that the select board is going to sponsor, and we're going to invite all the town residents to come and hear about various topics related to the work that we're doing. So that's what we're doing with our, our 
second action grant, third overall grant. And now there's an open um, request for proposals for uh, uh, the next round, and um, Deerfield is hoping to apply, we're planning to apply again, but the town has decided to apply. Um, and we have a number of, of similar projects that we're going to pursue, some additional culvert work, additional green infrastructure work. And um, in our core group, we have an MVP core group that's made up of the select board and the town administrator and DBW superintendent and a lot of town officials. We started thinking about, sort of brainstorming about this. Um, we're going to be doing some stuff at Frontier Regional High School, um, which is obviously shared with, with your community. Um, some green infrastructure work there, um, probably doing um, replacement of the parking lot with permeable pavement and some tree box filters and, mm. and, and collection for You're working with the there. superintendent about that right now? I'm sorry? Are you working with the superintendent yes. about that right now? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we started thinking, well, you know, maybe Conway would be interested in joining in with us on an application. It's possible to do um, regional applications and it actually bumps up the amount of funding that you can apply for. Mm -hmm. um, you can apply for, I think it's up to $5 million in a, in a regional application. And what would the parking lot be? What, what would it be? What, what, what would it cost? Oh, we haven't got an estimate for that yet. I'm hoping to get that in the next, I have to get yeah. it in the next couple of weeks here. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, that's a question mark still, but um, I'm waiting for engineering estimates to come in. So, um, you know, I started thinking about it a little bit more and, and talked to Tom on the phone a little bit, and Tom sent me your, your MVP plan, which I had a chance to take a look at. And it sounds like, you know, looking at that, you have a lot of similar issues. Um, your, your focus seems to have been on, on flood issues, um, particularly in the South River, um, and, you know, reducing flood um, problems and, and managing it better, and also doing um, green infrastructure um, to reduce flooding. So. Very compatible kinds of issues, and in, in ours is all from here west. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. yeah, and obviously anything that happens in Conway affects downstream mm -hmm. in, in in Deerfield. So there's a real interest on our select board's part in working with upstream communities, and so they've sort of asked me to reach out to you all and see whether mm -hmm. or not there's interest in partnering. Um, I'm going to write the application for the town in any case, so that you know there would be no cost to you um, to to join in, mm -hmm. which is kind of a good deal. Of select board are, are paying; they're paying me for for my time to write the application. Mm -hmm. Obviously, just to be full disclosure, but um, I would be able to you know incorporate um, some of your issues as well. And I think it would be good for both communities in the sense that I think a regional application would be more competitive. <coughs> Um, mm -hmm. And you know we could you know work together. I mean, so that's collaboration and, and cooperation. I think would be a, would be a positive thing. So, um, so I got a couple of questions about yeah. it. So the first so the first um, is d related to like just last last year for the first time um, Deerfield assessed to Frontier um, a significant fee for uh, water and sewage um, and. Since the school was built there in 1950 something or whatever, that they had never charged a fee for that, and that there was a feeling among those of us that were non-Deerfield that to charge such a fee was in violation of the agreement that set us all up originally, where Deerfield agreed to provide the land and whatever, and we provide the money, etc. Um, but so that that was just that that sort of. Uh, we're, we are now funding by virtue of our frontier assessment the. Deerfield uh, uh, infrastructure for the first time in a way that we hadn't been directly. Um, so that that kind of stuck in a lot of our craws the, 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 of the towns besides, but Deerfield's 49% of the school, so they just needed one more vote on school committee to get that passed, and that wasn't much of a problem for them. Um, so that that's one thing. The second thing is my, my understanding of the MVP grant process, and I, did, have we ever gotten an MVP grant? I don't know. That's a, that's oh, a side question. Not, you, not an action yeah, grant. You got a, plan you got a planning grant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not an action grant. Yeah. Um, so my understanding of it is that the, the nature of the process sort of pits town against town. That the pie is so big that they rank the applications and they fund them until, the, you know, by rank until the money's gone. 
So the ones that score, the towns that score higher, and that one of the ways you score higher on your application is by showing a regional, uh, whatever. So the, the things that our town is contemplating doing, and you are here to ask for such a thing. So by, by signing on to Deerfields or any, not just Deerfield, this is a, any other town kind of a thing, we would in effect be pitting, um, uh, we, we would be entering into a competition that grant versus the one just for our town and we the because it's a regional grant that grant would automatically be above the one that we want for our town so would so it so, would so, actually be a reason to sign on to it so that we're part of it and it gets funded um, let, let me just make sure everybody has um, this is this is uh, what Janet uh, oh, okay. Had um, sent around. I just want to kind of oh. fold that into the conversation because I don't see them as being. So could Janice get funded into this? Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Yeah, you wouldn't apply for two two mm. grants. Right. Ah. Right. Right. Oh. Doesn't make any sense to apply right. for two grants. Oh. You just apply for one. Now you that could have said, said at the beginning it would have maybe like a thirty seconds to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but because we've been approached by both parties, uh -huh. I thought it would be better to have the yes. the mm -hmm. roundtable yes. conversation. Sure. So you're with the Open Space Committee. Yeah. Under your proposal, uh, the match, where, how would the match, where would the match, and how much percentages? I mean, if we sign well, on to yours, we get... The match for, is, is going to be the same regardless of whether you are in a regional application or you just right, file your own. It's a 25% match, and it's it can be either cash or in-kind services. So, for example, if we did a floodplain zoning update in town, I think we could probably get the uh, match to come out of time from you know the town officials like the planning mm -hmm. board officials mm -hmm. that would work on that floodplain mm -hmm. zoning mm -hmm. you know with me presumably to do, mm -hmm. to do the work um, but if, if you were asking Conway to sign on to that are you going to ask Conway for a 25% match for the 25% match for bundle? anything that you folks want to do in your community in right? oh uh, so oh, right. Not for not for the not for the, not for the Deerfield not for the pieces. Line. No. Okay. So there would be line items within the grant. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a couple of things that kind of came to mind as as possibilities when I looked at your MVP plan and, and things that might be relevant to you. And I'll just throw these out. These are just you know ideas at this stage. Um, but I mentioned we're doing this land conservation strategy um, in Deerfield along the Deerfield River and we're working with Franklin Land Trust. Basically it's a mapping process where we're prioritizing parcels based on a set of criteria mm -hmm. and trying to figure out which ones are the most important, where we want to focus our energies. And we could expand that to Conway um, and especially to the South River um, floodplain area. And I don't think it would really cost you anything because for, in our case Franklin is Franklin Land Trust is providing the match. Mm -hmm. uh, I can talk to, to you know, the director Are they there. Providing about that. that match mostly in kind, just staff? Yes, yeah, mostly in kind, right? Um, at this point, and then once we get the next grant up, we're sort of thinking in, towards the future. We'll apply for money to actually purchase mm -hmm. either the development rights or similar <laughs> things. And and Franklin also is going to provide a cash match for that. They're they're doing fundraising for that. So I think that's a really, that's a fairly easy one in the sense that there probably wouldn't be any match um, cash-wise. Um, Tom mentioned to me that you folks were interested in purchasing a, a parcel on the floodplain on the South River. Um, you folks is a little premature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the hazard mitigation plan update group, mm -hmm. uh, who's been meeting with Kimberly to update that plan, um, was um, excited about the possibility of acquiring the parcel um, that would help with uh, uh, flood mitigation across the street here. Right, uh, right. And, and yeah. so that, that would be a possibility for getting funded through this program. And that, so that's actually the third item under this um, uh, on the agenda, just just as a heads up and an initial um, uh, just airing of that as a as a possible um, project moving forward. Right. Okay. Did you so, mention with Chris the community septic? I sent something to Joe and he hasn't responded to me yet. 
there's um, one of the one of the things that we're very concerned about is the lack of ability for downtown residences and businesses to grow uh, or even to exist have their status <laughs> uh, maintained. We have no infrastructure um, because yeah, we're, we're all well and septic. Of course, the community grew up along the river. Of course, the systems that were put in in the 70s and 80s are kind of due for refurbishing. It's a major expense for the homeowner. And we've been looking for the past few years at a, um, at a possible community septic system. And, and that's uh, a project that's pretty well fleshed yeah. out. And yeah, we, we have we have cost estimates. It's it's one and a half million dollars. We've applied for multiple and, grants and always gotten turned and, down. And that that's something that's um, definitely um, affected by the flood risk here. So having having a system that was less affected by that would, uh, I think, come under this. This, this potentially come under this program as well. We have applied for Mass Works funding for it. Um, the last time it was rejected, it has no real economic development component to it, except that we can't develop economically <laughs> given the current situation. Uh, but the way the Mass Works grant is constructed, that is not a compelling argument for funding the program because you're supposed to have already identified a partner company who's going to benefit by this, and we can't do that at the stage we're in, so. Yeah, I'm looking at the um, eligible projects, and um, you know, you have to make an argument that the project that you're doing is going to increase the community's um, resilience to climate change problems. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would be the challenge with that type of a project. Would right. so um, make that argument well, under uh, it keeps the uh, four there. All the septic in town from overflowing in a flood. What could be more compelling environmentally than that? Or before yeah. the flood? Yeah. So yeah, that's it, it, so. Is there are there examples of floods that have <coughs> caused septic systems to to um, to fail and to get into the river previously? I don't know what happened during Irene here. They were kind of overlooked. There was so much other crisis. I think. Mm -hmm. Joe, do you have um, uh, uh, John? Do you have any other memory? I know one house suffered septic damage and, and needed Irene. Uh, Phyllis's Phyllis's place needed Irene related septic repairs. I think that was the only one. Okay. Right. I think so. Yeah, it's it's really a it's sort of a fact based program. You have to be able to provide evidence that there are, you know, these previous problems and you document them, you provide photographs of them and so forth. I think, you know, for example, if you have Deerfield's got a wastewater treatment plant that's on the mm -hmm. Connecticut River yeah. and they're mm -hmm. talking about trying to provide some flood resilience for that in the sense of putting in retaining walls around the, the, some of the tanks to keep floods from going into the, mm -hmm. the system. So that kind of thing is, is probably eligible, but for example, building a whole new wastewater treatment plant would not be, you know, it's, so that's where I think that's, that's probably not going to be eligible to do a, an entirely new community. So, but you were system. saying you had some suggestions of projects yeah. that you thought would work. Yeah. Um, I think that you know the land conservation strategy, the possible um, identification of that parcel close to the center of town, if that if that can be documented as something that really would make a difference in protecting the town from from future floods, um, floodplain zoning update. Um, but you mean that's a parcel that we ne that we own and that we're working that you guys are working on. No, we don't own it. Is it a yeah, different one? We're talking about the same yeah. one. Oh, you the one over here? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, need, the, I would mean, need there more might be details. Another, about there might that. be. I mean, there's hopefully will might be another. More, I mean, they're high. We we had a huge fluvial geomorphology study done mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, one of the first in this area, and they identified 
26, 36 specific tasks all along the river that would improve um, flooding, yeah. uh, habitat restoration. And then they were, they're ranked in their priorities as to what will give us the most mm -hmm. bang. So, yeah. uh, are there other we're things that looking to to yes we are <laughs> yes there's a, we'll go down the list of the 26 priorities the things really haven't changed yeah um, and there, there's also a sort of an overarching you know the the river corridor mapping was done and putting that into a form that could be uh, something that would be uh, part of our zoning bylaws uh, would be sort of an uh, an overarching part of that, but there are very specific physical projects um, that have been identified, and Kimberly uh, was the one who did that study, so okay. she knows all about that. So yeah, I'm, I'm open oh, to yeah, that's, that's that number you, four. That it, it's, it's number four on this list. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, a lot of these things also involve public education and outreach to residents which the Open Space Committee has also identified as an as a important project. So number four would, would definitely be something that, you know, we'd be very comfortable including in this application. Um, it would go hand in hand with a floodplain zoning um, update, I think. And I've actually done a lot of work on river corridor overlay zoning um, in my past. I, before I worked for Deerfield, I was the chief planner for Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for 40 years. So I, I've, I've spent sure. a lot of time on, on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that, that, would, that would make sense to, to include something like that. And five and six are uh, public education and outreach. Um, that could be included as well. Pro probably good, good for that. For, um, and again, we'd have to go over with, um, uh, we'd have to have a, a pre-meeting with, with Kimberly and such too figure out which priorities mm -hmm. we would want to include in this right. particular So can, can I clarify process. like your role, you, were, you would do the planning and the... Uh, write the grant. He, well, he would write the grant, but then if the grant was awarded, you would, part of, a good chunk of it would pay you for your time to oh. do these outreach things I would, and I would do some pieces things. of it if you had some you know work for example that was engineering design similar to what Deerfield's doing we have you know other consultants that right would do they that would work. I'm, so I'm just, not an just to clarify then so basically as, as I envision this proposal the uh, FERCOG Kimberly for the first set is a small for what we can match mm -hmm. is small um, Twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar project. Uh, some would be for engineering updates to costs of specific projects, but then some would mm -hmm. be for the outreach time and preliminary stuff. Stuff. So, so. I mean, that's what you would do. Also, in a sense, are you? you there's an, an overlap of your tasks versus what we normally contract or basically can work with. Kimberly on. Is that, is that right? I mean, your roles are very similar. Are very similar, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And are there projects where Deerfield and Conway actually are involved together? You, you know, a bit of... Uh, Aside from Frontier. Well, Frontier is a great example, yes. Yeah. And FCAT. Uh, no, no, well, I, th that wouldn't be part of this, but, but the Frontier no, no. parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, you know, the river that goes down well, along Route in, 116 in terms and of education that becomes and outreach, Deerfield. Mm -hmm. FCAT might be able to participate uh -huh, in, uh -huh. in um, education and outreach. So they, they, we have a local cable access television program that puts together some great um, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, video pieces for various purposes. We were just looking at one earlier. Mm -hmm. for Yeah. Um, I, I didn't mention a couple other things. Um, one of the things we're thinking about is trying to get more student engagement at Frontier in this whole MVP process and climate change generally. So trying to get, you know, perhaps a special class set up so that students can learn about climate change and what's going on in town, but also participate actively themselves in 
in, in making some things happen. You know, maybe we'll have them help with the maintenance of these rain gardens that we're going to put <coughs> in the two schools, um, things like that. The problem with that is that they need the maintenance the most in the summertime. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> well, it'll be around. But, uh, you know, they, they could do that at least part of the time. Um, so we're trying to figure that all out, working with folks at Frontier on that. Um, obviously, the, you know, the, the parking and the tree box filters are sort of a regional piece at Frontier as well. What would happen but to the other four towns, the other two towns, Whateley and Sunderland? The, well, um, I don't know if anything would happen to the them, but too? we haven't reached out to them because, frankly, I've only got two weeks to write this grant. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about and I think yeah, you know, we're yeah. going to kind of take it one step at a time. You know, maybe but we're we'll, all part of Frontier. So. Maybe we'll do a regional application with Conway this time, and next time we'll yeah. try to get all four communities involved. Um, yeah. you know, I think we, we'll do what we can, but the time frame is really There's short. There's two I made don't worry about them. <laughs> <laughs> You, how much would it be? I mean, what what dollar, do, dollars are you looking at for this application? Yeah, I I don't have numbers yet. I, I mentioned earlier that some of the stuff we're doing, we have to wait for engineering consultants to give us some estimates on on things. But the the third round grant, the the one that we just got, was um, roughly four hundred thousand um, dollars. I think we're looking at for just the stuff in Deerfield. It's probably going to be maybe six hundred thousand dollars or so, but I, you know that's just very ballpark. Um, Would things like parking lot canopies for solar be part of something like this? You know, it's it's about. I, I wish those I, were I mean, included. It's longer term that's, climate change. It's that's, not flooding. It's but. definitely about protecting us from climate change, but yeah. it's not so much on on the list. They have energy resiliency strategies. So, um, I, don't see, that I don't see solar yeah. canopies being on this list particularly, but... Um, There's such a big push in the state to, to put yeah. solar on parking lot canopies. Uh, and, you know, we, don't, we barely have a parking lot in Conway. Well, the grammar school. We have a little, yeah, mm -hmm. dozen, no, 20 spots or something in the grammar school. I yeah. bet it's 40. <laughs> That's that's geared for the cities with their yes, parking it garages, and yes. it discriminates against us. So, what they say is proposed energy resilience projects shall incorporate clean energy generation, and um, they have to be paired with resilience enabling technologies like energy storage, energy management systems, black start and islanding technology, and microgrids. Um, so I think. You know, basically, they're looking for energy-related projects that would help if you, you lose power to critical facilities. Or, I know Northampton got funded for this recently. For their um, network of fire stations in Northampton, they mm -hmm. got funded for an alternative energy system if, in case they lost power to, you know, to mm -hmm. their, from their normal source. And um, so that's the kind of thing yeah. I think that yeah. would be eligible. Probably not a solar canopy as much as it makes sense to me too that that, yeah, that yeah. should be on the list. It's I don't think it is. They just it's the only big parking lot. Yeah, one of the bigger parking lots. They have in, the, yeah, in every around. every well, supermarket well, on the vineyard now. Like every Kroger system. Yes, it's right. amazing. They're putting it up. Yeah. Wow. And and it would That's it great. would help the uh, the highway facility as well. I think there's other funding sources that mm -hmm. could be used for solar canopies, and that's you know that's probably for another night's yeah. discussion. But Good. I think we could consider. So, so we don't have one of you working for us. You don't. No. Right now. Well, no. no. We have but you, Kimberly. But, but, you, but you can have me actually. I'm, I mean, I'm an eligible consultant to work with any town in Massachusetts. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, there's a certification process for MVP consultants, and I've been through that. And obviously, we've gotten a bunch of grants for Deerfield doing that. Um, I work with a, a small company called Conservation Works, which is based in Waitley, um, and there's a staff of, you know, a couple other people that work on these so projects with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you, you can work with us, you know, you could pick any consultant that you want to to work with, with but, not, you know, we're available and um, we're, you know, at this point we're sort of offering you the opportunity to, to collaborate. We kind of have to move quickly on this one mm -hmm. um, in order to meet the deadline, um, and uh, you know I'm going to have to really focus for the next couple of weeks pretty heavily on getting this grant done because it's a it's a big big project to write mm -hmm. it. Um, 
other questions. So, Janet, can you make some? This, will this work for with you getting this done in two weeks? We, within two weeks, we're not going to be hiring a consultant or whatever. Like, it's two, yeah, two no, weeks. We, we don't. We don't have to. We don't have to. He's going to do this. Well, well, we're, well going to, we're going to piggyback with them. Well, yeah, that's what I'm asking. That's, that's, what that yeah. that's what I'm asking. I don't. I don't. Oh. I, Um, I don't see how that would, you know, specifically get us in where I, where we need to go on on our particular river projects. Um, you know, with our twenty six thirty five recommendations, I, and well, uh, you'd have to pick out a couple of them, right? To do that, to that can you work with Chris and and see how we can coordinate this? Well, I'll have to, to, we'll talk to the committee tomorrow. I mean, the time is short, and it's just not, uh, you know, we've got the, the little bit of money for implementing the open space plan, and that's what mm -hmm. we're going to use for the match here. But it's still unclear to me what, you know, how, I... I <laughs> Well, I now, can, I can we, see this money being C lost in a big project. Can, here, can we use frankly. CPA funding for the open space uh, plan? To do the plan? No. I mean, we can use CPA funding for a, a, a river restoration project. Or for the match for a grant that's going to do? Or, or the match. Well, and we certainly can't do it in time. Yeah. We can't do it in time. You know, it's too. You can't get town meeting to approve something from CPA money in mm -hmm. two weeks. Well, you don't, <laughs> so, you don't, you don't, you don't have to have give, that. Happen give it, in give two us weeks. some bottom line pros and cons for us joining this. Yeah. Well, I think out of the things that um, are on your list here, um, I think there's a couple of them. This is that, okay. This is Kimberly's list. Okay, Kimberly's list. I'm sorry. It definitely does not represent us. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think we need to discuss that. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, working with the Franklin Land Trust on the South River watershed, prioritizing parcels for protection, that's, you know, on this list, that I think that would make sense for this grant and could be done without any real cash match from the town. So we're talking about number three. Number three. I think number four, you know, the river corridor <coughs> overlay, combined with my suggestion for a floodplain zoning update is very doable and could really just require an in-kind match from the planning board. Um, I think number five, public outreach to residents. If you wanted to do something similar to what Deerfield's doing this year, we're doing a, a climate action and resiliency forum, townwide mm -hmm. forum. We could, we, we could run something like that here as well. Um, and that's a very modest item budget wise and then the, the couple of frontier projects you'd, you'd be you know engaged with because it's a regional system mm -hmm. I think that might be a good start for you know for now um, and if you wanted to try to pursue that the acquisition of this parcel on the South River I, you know I'd be happy to work with you on that too that would probably require a cash match I'm, I'm sure it would require a cash match mm -hmm. and you'd have to think about that but bear in mind you, you don't have to have that cash match approved and in hand at the time of the grant application you, you just have to commit to, to seeking it and identify the source that it's going to be coming from so if you if you say we've got to go to town meeting for that that's fine you know you, you just identify that as your funding source okay now Janet now we have we have 26 recommendations from from Kim B. Kimberly's original work with the right. fluvial right. geoformologists. Right. Some have been done. Okay. Some uh, of which yeah. have been done, yes. Okay. okay. All right, so so, how okay. do we put these two things together? Uh, okay. Do we have conflict here, or, or well, are we together? Well, um, I see the priority it is in her number one. And um, I think that, you know, these three, four, five, six, you know, were nice things to do. It looks to me like kind of more planning and outreach. And, you know, we've done, I mean, a, a bunch of planning has been done. Uh, I think at this point we should focus on 
the detailed planning, like updating specs and negotiating um, perhaps easements or or but zero in on the on the really getting ready to uh, request funding for two three big big projects, however they come out, you know, including a land acquisition. Okay, so so, so does that's us, just a, that's does, just does us getting together with with Deerfield on this conflict with you want to do on on this? Or well, you could can they work with together? Kimberly. Well, I don't know in terms of you know not necessarily. I mean, if we do one and they do you know three through five, uh, well, I don't really see a conflict. I mean, that we, we've got to. Figure out the potential, the, the funding, the funding likelihood. I mean, these mm -hmm. these grants are going to be up against each other, or these proposals are going to be up against each other. And as I, you know, the, for the one thing, the one thing that that that, are, that hasn't been mentioned that uh, there's a potential benefit to going with uh -huh. Deerfield is that Kim Kim writes these MVP things for every town in our county. And if you look, and last year, last year I did not like ours. And, and, I, and, and I spent a little bit of time reading not just ours, but up on the FERCOG website, reading all the ones that she wrote. And if you look at them as a cohort, because that's when they get sent to the state, it's some guy or gal mm -hmm, sitting at a mm -hmm, desk mm -hmm, looking mm -hmm. at yeah, the, okay. this, the, they, they were just borrowed chapter similar. and verse. Okay, like, oh, and the, the amount of difference between all the ones, was, and they all read the same. And so mm -hmm. there's like it's competitions. And then, like, w when you look at all the ones from our county that looked like they were the exact same, except for you had to, like, page through it to see where the differences well, so, were, so, then, then mean, like, it, it sort of... There. Part yeah. of that, part of that's, part of those are plans, you know, this is to develop, to get updated specs for build projects to restore section by section remediation on the river is not going to be Kimberly. She's got a subcontract that to an engineer or get field geology to update the estimated mm -hmm. costs. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's different. I mean, yeah, the action grants will be, we will have be a, specific. We have a project mm -hmm. and we need, you, you tell us the regs and, and um, you know, somebody would pay for appraisals if we're talking about land. Mm -hmm. So that's just, uh, let me just different. Let me, let me clarify a couple things real quick. When we talked with Deerfield about this and branching out to Conway, Kimberly was at that meeting, mm -hmm. and she encouraged us to, to do this, to, to, to pursue a joint application. She thought it was a great idea and supported the idea that we would we would do it together and gave us some of the ideas, you know, that she thought were the most important things to pursue. Some of the same, some, same, some of the, some some of the same things the here. You would not be competing, there wouldn't be any competition from whatever grant you're going to seek for the for the river restoration projects well, against this application. If you wrote that as a separate grant. I'm sorry? I mean, if that were a separate grant. Well, or, I'm or assuming you're, you're thinking that these would be funded from some other funding source, number one, no. number two. No, no. You're thinking <laughs> this from, is from the MVP, MVP grant with the deadline on November 14th. Okay. So you so you're basically saying you want to do all all six of these things in in the MVP grant? Do you want to? Not, not necessarily. I mean, we we're going to try to negotiate how much we can get for this little bit of match money I'm offering. Yeah. You know where we potentially you know with your approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, this is what what Janet and Kimberly brainstorm. I see. As as our as comments. So, so are there yes. key things under number one that would make a significant difference that? They should be included in this joint project. Well, or I mean, the number one in general, yeah. And right, then, but that's well, different but he, projects. He was right, and but you, Chris, weren't really. Um, well, this is the first time I saw. I've seen this. Yeah, list. I mean, this oh. is this developed so, prior, prioritized river restoration projects in Conway. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> on the south he, he came here already stressed about only having two weeks to write the dear thing, <laughs> uh -huh. and that, now in, now in we're like, all right, plus these six things. Yeah. In and, Conway, uh, yeah. In, 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 you're, not gonna, <laughs> you're not going to put the in Conway, you know, at number one on your grant application with Deerfield. Well, 
I, I guess. I mean, I don't think what, you could. What I, what I would. <laughs> but it would be fun to put whole. number one into this grant application that we're going to do in two weeks. Would be the town of Conway to identify a river restoration project, which is your highest priority one that you want design funds for. And if you can, and you can provide detailed information about that project and what the justification is for it, we can we can put that into the application. Um, it just I don't know if you have that ready. I, I haven't seen this document, um, so maybe it's in here. Yes, they're in here. Um, they're in there. If you were to pick a river restoration project that you know is top priority, um, and, and you had documentation about why it's the top priority, what makes it most important, yeah, I think we could plug that into the application if you have a budget for it. Um, or we can get a budget from field geology services mm -hmm. within the next two weeks. And, and the, that, that has cost it. estimates in it, right? It did, yeah. So 5% mm -hmm. per year, to add, Just add that on uh, for a cost estimate, and then, yeah. So in, so, to, so get the updated and, um, and put that in as the big... You know, not just plan for them, not just have the engineering and so forth, but to actually put in like the cost to apply for the cost of the project. No, you you do you do the engineering in the first phase in this grant, and then we'd apply for another grant in the next round to do the mm -hmm. actual construction. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. the well, way that's, that's, that's the way this program. That's what I've, okay, does that, does that, that well, make that's sense? Well, that's well, yes, that's I mean oh, that's okay. the whole intent of. Okay, so if if we went with Deerfield on this. And we integrated those things that you want to integrate uh, from this this plan. Okay, that's that's good for you. That satisfies yeah, I mean, your, if your we need. Th this is for the town. You know, that's, right, right. Like, and, and if we think uh, the chances of success are going to be just as good or better by having the two towns so, name on it. Sounds like they'd be better. And number like one better, priority yeah. would like be. Better. I think because it's it's be. regional. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. which Great moves our application and, up, and, and you have history right. of success. That's right. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're as so, we write grants, and so and, you know we're part so, of a region with Ashfield, but right. this is not right. regional with Ashfield. Right, right, yeah. So when right. you because that involves the grant, yeah, up to here. Yeah, do and, they? And, I mean, you're going to have sort of steps. It's going to be activities. Your activities. I'm going, have a, I'm going to have a scope of work that's going to detail out all the work. And then, that's like going to be the done. components are going to be listed. Mm -hmm. you know, that's right. The frontier parking lot, number one. Yeah. I, we know. I mean, are well, they going to be prior? They're going to. Okay. We're, we're not going to rank anything in the application okay. itself. Okay. So, what's the likelihood of the grant being approved? Well, like maybe. Seventy-five percent, or we, you know, we approve this part of it, but we're not approving. Or they ever give you everything to ask right. for? Right. So where and how's the cutting going to go? Well, we don't know that. Well, I'm at the. We we yeah. don't make those decisions. No, I know, so, so but I mean, you gotta, you know, yeah. you anticipate this. Yeah. You I mean, your professionals anticipate that. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, are are we better off being together with Deerfield on this, or? Being on this yes. alone, and and the way and, you know we exist, we we exist on the crumbs off of Deerfield's table, like to begin with. I mean, like that's a like, Phil. That Phil, I don't think that's quite accurate. I mean, Phil. so we like, so that, that's sort of expect the I mean, same thing we're here. We're frontiers. We're fourteen percent of frontier. We expect I mean, the same thing here. Well, yeah. you know, are we gonna? Well, I, I mean, we. I just we. You know, you want to be clear. We don't want to lose the opportunity, and you know, an opportunity if we're. Right. And, and, and sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, nothing personal. No, no. no, no great job. That but way. you know, we you're, want, you know, you're you're welcome you know, to apply we, for the grant separately, and and that that's not going to be a problem well, for me uh, if you decide you, to you want it. on to yours. You can assure us that we're going to be a top priority. You know. I, well, I, I can assure you that <laughs> not be I lost can, in I, I can assure field. you of, of this. The, the the last two applications we filed, we were funded for all of the tasks. They didn't chop pieces of it out. Mm. I don't know what will happen this time, and I don't know what the competition is going to be this time, so I can't tell you what percentage chance we have of being funded because any number of communities could apply, and I'm sure there will be more competition in this grant round than there was the last time because more we're, communities have gotten We're better off competing 
together okay. than we are separately. And, and now, now can you get together with Chris and yes. talk about exactly? Yes, but I need to talk to things. you some for, for, for a little bit more. Sure. And um, explain again about the match. The match can come along later after our town meeting and the town meeting approves something. You, you have to identify in the grant application the source of the match, and it has to be you know, either cash or in kind, and you have to have a pretty detailed you know, response to it. if it's in kind, you got to say how many hours of planning board time, how many hours of open space committee time, town administrator's time, DPW I superintendent. Can, I can work on that. Yeah. Uh, so well, I mean, a lot of it can be in kind. Yeah. A lot okay. of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it can. I've got 25 hours already. <laughs> <laughs> and are there? Um, are there? Uh, I know that for uh, FEMA grants, there's a specific dollar amount per volunteer per hour. It, do you know if that's set up for this grant? Well, I think it was twenty-seven dollars yeah, an there's hour. Yeah, a standard volunteer yeah. rate that yeah. is used for all all these things. I think that's okay. exactly about right. Twenty-seven yeah. in the ballpark, okay. anyway. Yeah. Okay. This seems good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, all right. We'll have to, we'll have to Chris, scramble Chris, on the yeah. specific priorities. Yeah. To Chris will need right. some information from you and from. You know, yes. The, the yes. Report. Well, and then, and then. Well, maybe yeah. in tomorrow's committee meeting, you can get somebody else to do it. Maybe somebody and somebody else, somebody else will step up. And uh, hello. You're what looking sort at of, him. What sort of? <laughs> yeah. And 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 when you have the priorities, if you can let me know what the en the rough engineering design estimate is. Yes. Then okay. I can help try to figure out the funding source. So, uh, so I have heard. Or sources. Allusion to an acquisition, an open space acquisition. For some future project, which has not yet been discussed. Well, yeah. Well, I understand that. Yeah, but but as you know, John, you know the number one priority. Okay. Yes. And that remains. I mean, I'm not going to get flooded out, and I'm not a selectman. I'm going to <laughs> not be called for the next flood. But mm -hmm. that's that's what would is going to be ID'd here, unless I hear otherwise. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. And uh, maybe it's being discussed already <laughs> well you know we, we have we have plenty of information from that report yes that they we do of course for yes, you for, know. for two two three four five projects that's right okay so so let's pick the one that is top priority yes and we'll put it in with with what yes. Chris wants to do and we may have a very good chance because we do that of getting funding for that Right. Okay. Well, you were you were talking about including a few of these. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. You were talking about including a few of these. Yes. Right. Yeah. Not not yeah. just and not just one of these. But but one of the river restoration. But one projects. of the river restoration yes. projects. I think well, that's well, yeah. There, there are yeah. specifics okay. of number one. Yes. And that fluvial yes. geomorphology yes. was very board. good. Yeah. Wow, John. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you. yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's one. Right. So right. the negotiation is just one. See the way the way Kim the way this is worded is that they would develop a list of prioritized river right, restoration right. from those previously identified. And if we were just going to do this number one part, I mean, we would, I, you know, list the top five or four or yeah. something. I think that's, that's an exercise you need to do in anticipation of writing this application. You, you need to... Take yes. a look at okay, the prioritized Yes, I understand that. But, decide it, which one. but I sort of heard you saying that we they put put in one right. project. That, in the that, joint that, one, that's, there that's will what I be think is one. Reasonable. And I don't know what the budget is because I haven't seen this report. I mean, do you have a sense of what, well, what the and, and I'm is. suggesting. Big. I'm you know, suggesting. 300,000. Okay, so that, that is big. Yeah. <laughs> and that was five years ago for the first one. So, right. so yeah. again, 25% of 300,000 is the town's responsibility. And we could get that at town meeting with CPA money, you know, the request. And if it was important enough, you'd have a special town meeting. But well, well, okay, we can take it from CPA money. Yes. Right. That was my question. Right. A project yeah. like, like that, right. the river. Yes. Okay, so, so that's just an allocation of CPA funds. That we yeah, already have. It, it has to be applied for Each and approved project by CPA has to be approved by town that. meeting. Right, right. Yes. But we already have those funds. We the just fund, have to yes. allocate the funds yes. by a vote of town meeting. Yes. All right. So and we have we have the funds sitting there. We have plenty of CPA funds yes. sitting there. Yes. Right? We need things to do yes. those CPA we funds. Do. We so do. This is a good idea. 
okay. right, to allocate some of those funds. Right. Okay, right? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. But, well, we, we, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll send you a, a couple because um, and all, all, most of these projects, as Kimberly says in this, the land is all privately owned along the South River. So it all, every task, Project depends on their cooperation and their buy-in, and mm -hmm. we can't count on that. You know, there's a lot of. Well, that could be an issue. If if it's on private property, you're, you're going to need to have landowner approval oh, I know. <laughs> in, in advance of, of this application. Oh, well, part of what part what 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 Kimberly was under her approach was she was this she was going to negotiate that they were going to work on. They're going to staff was going to delve into what it would take. Well, so maybe that's the maybe. that's what we work on then. Maybe, maybe it's not so much a, a engineering a specific item if it happens to be uh, with with private landowners mm -hmm. as you know doing exactly what it says in number one here, which is a, taking a step back from that and doing the landowner outreach and finding out. Out of those prioritized projects, which ones are possible given landowner um, acceptance of the of the ideas? That would make sense. Yeah. Actually, what, what we need to do is to get sense. together what we can do in the next two weeks to put this okay. to be in this application. Okay. Before that's the that's things do in two weeks, so it's yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yes. So, so if if you can identify a top one, two, three, and um, and, they, and it does not require landowner cooperation in some sense, then we can go forward with that in the application. If it does, then we write into the application a broader working, mm -hmm. working with, with all the landowners on these possible projects to see which ones we can move forward in the next round. And I, and I do think that makes sense. I think that would be an yeah. eligible task. Then you basically just have a three-phase project. You, you do that in this, this round. You do the engineering design in the next round, and then the third round you do the actual project. So, you know, th and that's good. I think actually, what once you get the state sort of bought into this, you know, they're makes, invested. It, yeah, they're invested. It makes sense for them to fund the next round and the one after that. Mm -hmm. So, sound good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, unless there's some other developments. Not in a few weeks. Well, not at this moment in time. All right, yeah. all right. That might okay. change. That might it, change that it, status. It could change at any time. Okay, then you will yes. let us know. We certainly because will. Because we will just. All right. Yes. Okay, clear so, enough. So, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Does it sound like you're going to be able to identify a project that isn't on private yes. land? Yes. You do think that you will be. That is not on private land. Michelle, do you remember? Just the Rose property. Right, well, I mean, the town's okay. park. What else is not private land? Uh, uh, no, I don't think we can. <laughs> okay. So that's okay. I mean, that, okay. that, I mean, I really like the idea of it's a serious project to talk to all of the landowners and find yeah. out. Well, you're not going to. That's been what's holding up. Yeah. This. yeah. That's right. Right. So this would give you funding to do that. Yeah. And I think that would be a, a very well, but we positive could have first step. funding for acquisition, so we didn't have to go through this. But you have to you have to have we don't want to own the land. You, you have you to propose what you're right. requiring. Yeah. You have to have a tax for him to work with. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so and it would be so in what yeah, so we should exchange email addresses and so forth. Here, this is me. So Here. That's me. Right okay. There. Okay, so send okay. me a message and we're, okay. we're all set. And if you can send me that, uh, yes, I, will I will ask you for that. That would be you great. You reply and then I'll have yours. Okay, okay. so okay. we're all set. Yeah, well, what okay, I will Okay, well, we need a vote. Yeah, what okay. I Okay. Um, and and you'll, you'll need a vote for us to... Um, Participate. To participate in the um, municipal vulnerability preparedness grant with uh, with Deerfield. Are there any other questions? Do you have something for us to sign today? Do we have no. Do we have any other okay. questions? So you will need to sign at some point. Have I been um, exhausted before? enough? No. Are, are, are we all set with? Yes. With, yes. We're all set. Yes. Yes. So we'll now meet every two weeks. Or when necessary. Are, are we are we pretty much in agreement about this right now? Mm -hmm. 
We, okay. we could right. we could meet five. earlier yeah. if necessary. Oh, on the 12th at 5 p.m. Yeah. The deadline for the application is the 14th, so okay. there'll, there'll be an opportunity for you to, to vote on actually signing Great. the application on the 12th. Um, okay, so right, we, right now what we want to vote on is participation, right? Yes. Are we clear on that? Yes, yes. All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, vote to participate in uh, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant along with Deerfield for what has been discussed here tonight. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And Chris, before you think to yourself, boy, this Conway, they're like more trouble than they're worth. <laughs> Just for someone that's <clears throat> contemplating doing a big regional one with Waitley, and, and I'm telling you, there's so much more high maintenance than we are. So this is just a, <laughs> you live a little. No, I live in Deerfield. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Your, your business is in Waitley. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Just you'll check. see. You'll see. You'll see when you try to do it okay. next year. All right. Let's let Chris go now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming in. And thank you, Chris. Really thanks, nice thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Janet, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for coming in. Good seeing Good you. To Are see you leaving happy? Good Janet? to see. Yeah, I think so. I, I you think know, this is progress. we don't know the dollar amount. It depends That's on okay. In there for us. We're, we're, this is first step, Janet. Okay. We're, we're moving moving forward. Thank you, Janet. Okay. Nice to see you, Michelle. Good to see you, Michelle. Good to see you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. I dragged Michelle in. No, no. All the time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay. Service, all of you. Lisa, also. Good luck. Good night. Good night. There was a lot to that discussion. There was. Um, you know, under under municipal vulnerability, we didn't discuss that last one. Um, I, I'm not sure whether we want to discuss that. Uh, I don't. I don't think. Uh, now I think I think no, I, I've, we've, I we've think said enough, and yes. and I'll check with you about uh, putting it on a future agenda. Right. Okay. That's good. Cemetery issues. Peter, come on. <laughs> at last. You were probably told to be here at six thirty or something. No. The guess was six twenty. Six twenty. Yeah. I I, I, no. I I thought it was everything would just pull right together, and it did after an hour. It was <laughs> there was a lot to it. There yeah. was. So. All right, Peter, what do we got? Well, um, Tom put the cemetery issues on the agenda for tonight, and I'm here uh, to kind of see how the discussion goes, I think. Um, it started last time. Yeah. Yes. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we thought we'd, uh, now we have John with us, and the uh, the discussion was that there are items of business related to the town cemeteries as opposed okay. to the shall we say working cemeteries that are private okay. and they seem to be of a kind of a long term uh, heavily research oriented kind of uh, um, character and mm -hmm. I thought that it might be a possibility that the select board would want to uh, move that responsibility to a differently established commission rather than act as the cemetery commissioners, which you have been in lieu of anybody else doing it. Mm -hmm. To actually do that would take a town meeting vote and Peter work uh, to find what we'd have to do to do that. It's adopting a local option to have mm -hmm. a, an appointed cemetery commission. Okay. So that's... Um, Which would report to the select board the way... Oh, mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, it would be appointed by the select board. Yeah, Peter's done an awful lot of work on the, on the, the cemeteries, um, and, and we thank you for that, Peter. That's been, that's been great. And Peter mentioned that he knew someone else who was you interested in it. He knew someone else who and, might serve one of the And Phil Sanders, though, yeah. he was interested in it and thought Sarah Williams might be interested yeah. in it. So we have to think, I mean, maybe, you know, an odd number is better. It could be three mm -hmm. or five, but, we, you know, depending on who was interested, um, we could uh, we could include that in the, in the special town meeting that we're all expecting eventually okay. this fall. All turn it out. All right, so we're proposing to 
Well, and, and I'm just saying, uh, you know, form, I, I wanted to open a cemetery commission uh, that would be separate from the select board. So I wanted mm -hmm. the select board to have a chance to talk about that, you know, with, with all of you here and, and, and well, you know, you know pros and cons. That Peter, sort of Peter's an expert on the cemeteries. Phil is a historical society, and uh, so is Sarah Williams. Um, they would all have an interest in, in seeing that the uh, the, the cemeteries are, are kept properly and uh, identified properly, you know. Uh, this, this would also involve identifying um, whether or not there were still spaces available and a town, proposing town policies as to how to deal with those. Right. Because yes. we, we did get a request for somebody if there was a space open in one of the cemeteries and that uh, we have, for some reason, extremely poor records. So this might also involve some of the work that Peter's been doing in finding out about um, around penetrating radar and, mm -hmm. and uh, Lee's also working on mapping and I know uh, um, uh, Peter has also been doing you know mapping of, uh, of graves and things like that. So <laughs> there is a fair amount of actual detailed research work to do and I thought it might be good to uh, have yeah. that off. Nine years ago, we had a request for a plot in one of our cemeteries. And I had to do a lot of research to figure out where a plot was available because we don't have good records. We don't have good maps, or at least we didn't at the time. Yeah, we don't, they're not. And it was, qu it, was quite a, it was quite a task to do that. So I, I fully, fully agree with, with putting a commission together to, to do this stuff, to research this and figure out exactly what's going on because it's important, it's very important. I agree. Okay. Are we passing this on Halloween on purpose? <laughs> uh, it's, it's not, not Halloween, yet. Yet. Uh, Halloween Just about, just about. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll come up with a, with a draft uh, article for the uh, special town meeting warrant uh, that accepts that chapter and section and- Sure. Yeah. And, uh, so, so what what we're looking for now is just a consensus on moving forward with yeah. this. Is that correct? Yeah, I just wanted okay. to have the opportunity to have a discussion because it is your purview. And yes, you yeah. Know, okay. You were clear. talking about another course in Westfield that you were going to go to. Yeah, I last Saturday I went down to attend a uh, presentation in Westfield. Uh, it was about um, the work that my uh, Long Meadow has done for its cemetery uh, using ground penetrating yeah. radar, and it was a, um, they were able to identify um, where um, there are are burials, <laughs> and some of them were not marked, and most of them were, and you know. The, they had an issue where some of the headstones got moved, and mm. so it was rather complicated. But you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to see what another community had done mm -hmm. and how effective it was. And it, I think um, it would have um, potential for Conway mm -hmm. um, in identifying where there would be likely be spaces. You know. Uh, the Cricket Hill Cemetery uh, space is limited, and uh, I know um, there has been, over the years, some interest in that one mm -hmm. specifically. The most recent um, inquiry was about the Shirkshire Cemetery, and um, you know, to be on the safe side of the ground penetrating radar, would probably identify, I think, would identify where there are openings. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. Why there's no stones for that whole back 20 feet, that whole border, that 20 feet against the back wall that should be the oldest stones, there's nothing there. Yeah. And why mm -hmm. is that? There's like weird mysteries like that in all of our little cemeteries. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, and, um, you know, there, I think, um, yeah, the uh, community uh, CPA funding um, would be a you know, really good example uh, or use of, the, of that sure. money. Historical. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And you can like rent or lease ground penetrating 
radar equipment? That, that's what you were uh, using? There before? are people who do it. There are this funded business. cemetery yeah. stuff with their yeah. CPA to hundreds of thousands per mm -hmm. year for four or five years now. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, um, want to stop in in, De uh, in Deerfield and get some leads there. I did get some names over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So there, there will be some different options, right. um, mm -hmm. and you know we can get an idea of how much it might cost and start okay. from there. All right, uh, we're all in agreement. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, we task Tom uh, with the uh, um, with the task of. Investigating this further, moving forward with a uh, warrant, warrant for the warrant article, okay, which is the adoption and of the law to create the yeah. yeah. It yeah. allows the select board to appoint to some of yeah. that. All right. Do I have a second? Yes. All right. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Okay. And thank Great. you for all your work you're doing yeah. on the cemetery. Thank you yeah. very it's much. Very important. I'll be in touch. Now. Okay. Thank you. See you, Peter. The okay, next item is the uh, driveway to the highway salt shed and new shed speed bumps. Mm. Yes. All right. What? What? Are, why are we even entertaining speed bumps? Have there? you been there lately? <laughs> They're there. They're there. Uh, we already put bumps. no. Where? Where did the speed bumps come from? Uh, uh, the the Pleasants put them up. Oh, uh, next to the sheep barn going second. up to the. Wait a second. That's our easement. It is that's our. That's why it's on the agenda, John. Yes. Yeah, that's our yes. easement. Yes. Okay. And well, uh, did we did did they ask us about anything about speed? No, bumps? they did not. However, <laughs> uh, uh, I have been in touch with town council about this. Mm -hmm. I've been in touch with the highway superintendent about this. I have now asked the highway superintendent to communicate directly with town council regarding the speed bumps uh, because town council believes. That the matter hinges on whether the speed bumps are reasonable in not interfering with the right of passage. Uh, the highway superintendent believes that one of them is not reasonable. What, the what other one might speed be bumps look like? They are different. One of them is much higher and more abrupt than the other, which is something that the highway superintendent is concerned about. So this is why I wanted to talk directly to town council and express and why it is unreasonable. Any work done on our easements has to be approved by us. Ah, that is not something that the, the town council came out with immediately. Um, I will note that there is no national standard for speed bumps. Um, and... Um, I, 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 let's let's back up a little. That's uh, let's, let's back. So it's hard let's, to say. What are the speed bumps for? There were complaints that the highway vehicles were speeding as they were coming out. Something which uh, I believe may very well be true, um, or at least some, and it, also not just highway vehicles. And there is mention of there being a child who might be around and running around the. Uh, Sheep barn and uh, our highway superintendent agrees that, that it, it's a blind corner as you're coming out. The sheep barn is close enough to the driveway so yeah. that it's very hard to see, especially a small person running out. Um, but, uh, and this is another reason why he keeps wanting the uh, road to be moved, which we know is not something that, that the school is in favor of. Uh, but it it continues to be um, uh, more or less a, a, a neighborly issue of... Um, and there, there's, a perception from, there's a perception from the landowner that, <laughs> that they communicated quite clearly to the highway department that, this was, that the speed was a problem, but there's a perception amongst the highway department that they did not know that the landowner was All concerned right, no, about no, their no, speed. No, wait a second. We, we have that, that length of road from where the where the school uh -huh. is to where the salt shed is, uh -huh. is what, 200 feet? Not even. Okay. Yeah. How are people speeding on 200 feet? Uh, well, it's downhill, and I've certainly seen... Well, it's only downhill one way. 
Yeah. We're coming right. the other way. You're right. going and, the way and, and, and the other way is not a problem. It's it's coming down when the sheep barn is acting as a blind to to what's beyond it. And there, uh, I don't know what the real extent of the that problem is. But now we have to deal with these speed bumps that were installed without warning. One of which is very abrupt. Is it plowable, or what will happen if and our it may not, and it may not be plowable? Right. Um, well, that is certainly something that is what did, of what concern did, what to did, our highway superintendent. What did town council say? He hasn't said anything yet. He's hasn't waiting said. to talk with Ron about what okay. the actual problems are and whether it might be reasonable or not. Now, apparently, this word "reasonable" is something that he's. Um, that comes uh, into the lore a lot, the term means, reasonable. Yes. yes, so he, he uh, needs to establish that it's not reasonable. Well, you know, one of them very well may not be, but there is no national standard, so it's difficult. First unless of Unless they talk to okay. each other. Before so anything. That's all I'm okay. telling you is I let them, it's, told them to talk to each it's other. It's our easement. And Gary's. And it's his and property. Gary's. Yeah. It's our easement. Not, yeah. not just ours. There's another. There's a third person that also has yeah. it right away. That's true. Y yeah, yeah, okay. Identical to ours. Right. But it's it's over mm -hmm. ours, and and yeah. we're the ones that actually use the easement. Gary doesn't use the easement. He has it, but he doesn't use it. Okay. Um, I, I you know. Yes, I'm trying to move it forward. Is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, my, and I'm trying to get I, the two parties who need to talk to each other talking. I can suggest so a way to move it, it forward. <laughs> I can suggest a way. I'm sure. But I won't. Sure. I won't. <laughs> I'm sure. I believe I'm thinking of the, the See, way I, that you're I consider testing. myself friendly with all the parties involved, and uh, I, I've been hesitant since this has come up. I've been hesitant to talk to anybody about this stuff because there's open, you know, uh, whatever. And but but Tom's I my, Tom's my neighbor. I know. Yeah. I know. But it's Ken. Ken is the Kenny is the landowner, not Tom though. But well, Tom was the original landowner. Correct. Yeah. But technically, it's Kenny that put the speed bumps up because it's Kenny's property. Kenny's the name of the boy, the son. The oh, I know, I know okay, Ken. Okay. Yeah, I know Ken. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, you know. I, 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 th I think to get everybody in here and chat it out, it can go away. I do. I think the speed bumps I, can go away? I, I think that would be great. I... I well, I, I I think it would be worthwhile getting an opinion from town. Council. Yeah, we, we we need town council. Just just this. just to know what we're going into the meeting with. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't see the need for it right now. Let's get town council's opinion, and let's get Ron's opinion on this. Well, we have Ron's opinion, and that is that it is unreasonable and. Um, that plowing is a problem. That plowing will be a problem. And the, 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 the property owner is of the states that they'll do the plowing. It's the, they understand it's their and But Ronnie's like, well, it's two in the two, you know, two o'clock in the morning. We got to get everything up and running. You can't. They're not going to be plowing that little stretch of road for us. I mean, it's not reasonable. And blah blah blah. Yeah. It's okay. All right. Yeah. Let, let's let's get town council's opinion. All right. And I'm trying to do that. Good. Just saying. Okay. Right. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, electric vehicle chargers for the Conway Grammar School. This was left over from last time because um, we didn't have quite all the information that we might have wanted. Since then, uh, we found out a number of things, one of which is that one of the programs in which we would get some of the, uh, some of the installation costs paid for by Eversource is closed. And the one that is open to us, uh, Eversource does not give an installation payment for. So, where does so that leave we, would, we would have to pay 40% of the cost of installing them. And I got prices for installing them that were all somewhere between uh, a little over $2,000 for a pair of them to $14,000 for the equipment, putting them in, installing them, and, and, and all of that. There are a number of associated costs, including installation, which would not be paid for, including an annual fee. Um, and I left uh, that thinking, 
this is not the freebie we thought it was, or almost freebie that it might have been. And uh, I certainly couldn't recommend moving forward with the particular program we have now based on the information we got from Phil, who said the, the school did a survey and uh, there are no owners of electric vehicles now, though a couple of people might consider them in the future. So to go ahead and pay and to incur ongoing costs for a need that does not currently exist did not seem to me to warrant a recommendation to move ahead. Okay. What do you think? Uh, I agree. Okay. You agree? The, the, the only place to me it's reasonable is at the grammar school. They don't need them yet. Uh, and the program I hope there is a program that opens up again. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so they always give you the money when you don't need it. A lot of negatives here. Yeah. And and certainly, you know, if if we can't put them in, if nobody's going to use them. Well, right. we can put them in. You know, uh, Shelburne Shel Shel put one in, and Shelburne's comment was, "We paid an awful lot of money for something that's not used very much." Okay. So you have some some mm -hmm. empirical evidence here that there's there's a problem. Deerfield Academy really likes theirs, though, and reports that theirs are being used every day. And okay, that, that's a and different situation. they have situation. a lot of employees. Yeah. Uh, and different situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so we're not going to move ahead with that right now until something changes. More that's people okay. get electric cars. Yes. Okay, good. Next item on the agenda, sign the pilot terms memorandum with Nexamp. Yeah. I was expecting Lee to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, I can tell you about this. I can't go into nearly as much detail as she would be able to, but uh, Roy Bishop, who was here and everybody met, yeah. uh, has developed this um, memorandum of terms, which is not the agreement. It's an agreement to what reach the agreement. The agreement. Says, yes. And uh, I did send that out with the uh, with the materials, so you've all had. A I thought that paragraph seven didn't make much. Uh, was poorly was poorly written and subject to confusion. But you're talking about the the word property you don't like. No, the um, does that, that's not the, that that sentence with whatever. I, I thought the. Exclusion, non-exclusion, whatever. You can, well, it, it, it makes sense it, to you. It okay. means land is still taxable. Oh, right. Um, the the landowner will still be charged property tax. Right. That's what it should say. That makes more sense that's than what it says. And, and, well, that that is what it, it says. says okay. in, land assessment in, in property backwards. tax will be they're, they're, excluded from this agreement. They're, 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 it's they're, not that part makes of sense to you. Outside of, yeah. But the word property, I thought, was misleading up here, where it said development from property taxation. Uh, uh, that property means the, the capital equipment that's, that, that Eversource is going to install. All of the right. rays and... Right. That's what we're doing. We are exempting them from, from having their property taxed by them giving us this amount of money every year right. uh, according to the terms of this agreement. That's exactly mm -hmm. what we're doing. Yes. And we're not the, exempting the land under it from the property. And so, and I was, yeah, and I was trying, I was trying to remember what the what the actual things, what what the actual point of contention was last time, and it was the escalator, and it was whether it was going to be one point five or something. Well, do you remember? It was two. He and thought two. thirteen. It was two. Yeah. Thirteen thousand per megawatt was the right number, and now this is saying eleven. Well, he right. He had, he had talked about eleven, as well. And we wanted twelve. Yeah, and I guess. Whatever happened between the two of them, this is what he's. So has Nexamp agreed to this? Yes, so. and, and they've, yeah. they've actually they've signed, signed it. Signed it. Uh -huh. Oh, oh that, that that was their signature. That whole Chris Clark. Oh, okay, good. Uh, th this looks like the terms he gave us last time. Exactly. They're. That's what I, I kind of thought. I bet he yeah. he hoped he, you know he was hoping to get more, but I guess. You know, he said this is this is probably what we're going to end up at, and that's fine because this does include the the battery storage. You know, we get this is a new thing that they started out in Eastern Mass, and um, so they their their battery storage is is 
now because that's being, as Bob mentioned earlier, that's being promoted by the state. Right. Right. Um, yeah. That that's helping uh, both sides. That it's helping them establish that, and it's helping us um, by allowing us to tax it. So that's good. Or not tax it, but get the pilot for it. So we're starting out at 11 on the first year, and we're going up at 1.5% per year for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Do we think the rate of inflation is going to be 1.5% a year for the next 20 years? We have no idea. They have no idea. Um, I would also... Historically, that's never come close to happening in a 20-year period. You're that's right. right. Yeah. I, I, would, I would also note that um, technically, at this point, um, they don't owe us anything because of, you remember, there's the, was it Swansea ruling? Uh, there have been two rulings now that, um, unless the law changes, um, this whole project is tax exempt. Well, and and, and they don't Lord need to negotiate yeah, yeah. Right. So so right. the reason they need it is to go forward with a with a plan that the bank will say this is a this is a good financial plan. So that's the reason they're willing to do it. And you know this is this is the fellow who's been negotiating these agreements all over. Um, this is the result of a fairly long process and a lot of give and take. And we're getting much closer to what we wanted than. Next amp is getting to what they originally proposed, so I think it's a good deal. Um, does Lee have a comment on this? Did she give you any comments on, on this final? Oh, she's in favor of it. She is. This, ba partic ba this particular set of specific. Yeah, ba right based here. on based on on Roy's recommendation. Oh, her right. Okay. Yeah. I don't think she thinks we can get any better. Essentially. Okay. So we're going to get this on the solar panels, and the land will be taxed as as normal. Great. Mm -hmm. Questions? I, I I support it. Phil, I I had hoped that this whole process would result in a greater tax revenue. Uh, for the town, I, I guess my hopes were misplaced. Well, okay, the 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 land itself is going to be taxed at what it's being taxed at now, right? And will be assessed more as time goes on because all of us will be assessed, more. right? So this just accounts for the panels, okay? And and we believe we're getting more doing this than we would if it were assessed as personal property of the company, which is now technically tax exempt. I'll just add again. But even if it weren't, we believe that this is better for the town. So we're gonna be getting 65,000 or 60,000, somewhere in there. Not, it's not nothing. Um. It is not nothing. You are correct. You know, You're an English teacher, right? <laughs> so, so, so 15 Math. houses? Uh, uh, you know, 20 houses? Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. No, I, I was surprised. I, I thought that from when we met with Roy that there would be more movement in our direction, that some movement in our direction. It seems like this was just everything that we I'm sure he about. tried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure they had, they had lots of reasons in that first letter that they weren't going to move and he made the move, so that was good. Is there a high-pitched pitched whistling sound? No doubt. It's yeah. Fluorescent lights. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> That's awful. I mean, I think it's going right. to get it settled, too, so, so, so next thing you know, this is on. the result of, of a consultant who's, who's an expert in these matters. Okay. He did. He he was. He had expertise. I agree with that. Okay. And experience. And we're all in favor. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we we sign the. Uh, uh, 
pilot. Memorandum of terms. This is the the terms for the tax agreement between the town of Conway and Nexamp Conway Solar for the proposed solar energy facility located at 2394 Main Poland Road in Conway uh, based on the general terms uh, as presented in this pilot document. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Not mine. I think there are two copies of it. Is that right? Um. No. no oh, you're no. doing the fur coat. This is the fur oh, coat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, can you, uh, John, can you at least initial this uh, semi-annual change? Oh, yeah. Yeah, give me that. Maybe all of you should. Because we only fill semi-annually. Yes. Yeah. This, yeah. this is his boilerplate for the quarterly going. Now, with, with these with these two copies for FERCOG, they only we need one addendum? Because we only have one addendum with it? Yeah. Okay. That's that's the list of the uh, facility, right. a list of the equipment in the various at the various sites. Right. Okay. Phil, have you reviewed this? Um, yeah, you know it's 18 pages long and it doesn't look so good in the computer printer because it was small small ink. I I like the part that you could get out of it in 90 days if you wanted to, and when you look at SpaceX, Starlink, and all these other internet things that are being created to for worldwide emergency responder communications. These are going to, about to become everything. The way they're doing it is about to become extremely obsolete, like within just a year or two. So, yeah, th this is this is, this is something we have to do. Yeah, yeah, this is something we have to do because uh, you know, right now we we have a system that's being held together with. You know, bubble gum and bailing wire. So, this is this is an absolute must. I'll make a, uh, a motion that we sign the memorandum of agreement with FERCOG regarding the emergence their emergency communication system. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. User agency town of Con. We now only need one signature. Hey Jenny, how are you? <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Uh, we only need one signature on this? That's all I asked for. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Did we? We, we did. already passed we it. We, we already did. did it? Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to designate a select board OPEB fund trustee. Yeah, I'm your OPEB fund trustee for Frontier Regional. Um, you are? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so this is different, but the we the the main job of the trustee is the the in, to determine investment <coughs> vehicles for the OPEP thing, and yeah. I'm I'm really into the whole conservative, like strictly conservative, don't risk people's retirement stuff kind of <coughs> uh, 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 a way to go. <laughs> why, why don't we let Jan do it? Well, no, Jan well, is part of it. Looking yeah. for, so, for so Jan's looking a for a yeah, the, the, looking for, okay. The, this fine. was the result of the town meeting. Can you do to both? Suck this do, you yes. wanna, do you want to do yeah. it? Sure. That would be okay. great. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, designate uh, Phil as the select board OPEB fund trustee since he is already doing it for Frontier. Yeah. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Sure. Aye. Uh, proposed date for the old committee meeting is Tuesday, November 12th. Bad day. Ooh. Bad day. Bad day. Yeah, normally we would have done it tonight, but right. unfortunately I wasn't on the ball two weeks ago. And it okay. slipped my mind. The third so or fourth week is much better. Well, Tuesday the 19th is another school committee thing, but those Thursday, 
Well, it could be. It, it, usually, it's on a Monday because mm -hmm. it's usually together with the select board meeting. So we could do it on the off Monday. On the 18th. That's the Monday, Monday. The 18th would be good. Yeah. We could even do it the previous Monday. I can't, uh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do, do the next fourth. Week. I can't do it next week. Okay, so the eight, 18th. That's fine. That's actually good because it gives committees a little more time to uh, schedule it. Unless you want to do it on the 25th. What's the 25th? Is that the, that's the weekend? Uh, yeah, that's getting. Yeah, that's okay. But yeah, that's no good. It's getting late. Okay. Week. I was trying to do it in October always. Okay. Um, next item, appointment of Susan Artemieff. How are we pronouncing her name? Artemieff? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, to the uh, Cultural Council for a term ending um, June 30th, 2022. She doesn't come with? <laughs> Never heard the name before. Don't know. Well, she's been, you know, uh, recommended by the Cultural Council. Yeah. All right. Um, do I have a second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any items not anticipated? I have none. You have none. Okay. Okay. Your update. On uh, committee and board news, the Board of Assessors is reconsidering a senior work off program proposal. We've heard from a number of places where it is a popular way to reduce some seniors' taxes. We may have a proposal for you soon. It would have to be approved by town meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it would involve setting a cap and some policies about um, how they go about how do you administer work. We did this for the first 200 years of our existence. Where you could work off your taxes on the roads. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah, work on the roads. <coughs> the the <coughs> Capital Improvements Planning Committee met and is beginning to work on the capital plan. This is a substantial project and a long-term process. It will not be completed by the time capital requests are due, which will be in a couple of months, but it is really always a work in progress, and I'm very pleased it's being worked on. Uh, in the search for whether the town accepted the, oh, this is the Cemetery Commission. Yeah. And, oh, right, um, this is different, though. In a search for whether the town accepted the state law regarding an appointed Cemetery Commission, which I wanted to check on before I brought it to you, I found three files of local option acceptances and with leases helped compile them into a single Excel file, which I've turned over to the town clerk. I did not find that the town had accepted the relevant state law, though, uh, Peter Freisham is going to continue looking if he doesn't find anything, and I don't think he's going to get to it before our special town meeting. Anyway, I think it should be an article on the upcoming annual or special town meeting warrant. Fine. If we've already done it, we'll do it again. Fine. Not a problem. Yeah. Uh, in departmental news, Kurtz, Inc., started to pour concrete for the highway shed this past Tuesday. Mm. The total pour will take about two weeks, ending, we hope, in advance of any overly cold weather. The forecast now is for a couple of nights to dip below freezing, but the pour should be fine. Nighttime temperatures in the 30s are all right if the days are above 50. Fortunately, the, for the forecast for the next eight days looks good, with only two nights dipping slightly below 50. If it, if it, uh, that's not right. The days are below, uh, two nights dipping slightly below 40. freezing, I think, is what I meant. Okay. Um, hence the F sound. Uh, if it gets too cold, the contractor will cover the slab with insulating blankets, which are on site. They can also have the concrete mixed with hot water and or additives. That's all to say that if anybody was worried about the concrete pour, as I was, they have it covered. 
Did it get delayed slightly? I thought when, it was going to happen a couple when, weeks ago. When are they pouring? Uh, they have started, they started to pour. They started to pour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, they started to pour last week. And the next amp we've already covered, <coughs> actually. Um, we also are uh, looking at their uh, decommissioning bond. I think it's fine. It, it's exactly what the planning board required in their in their uh, special permit process. It took me a while to figure that out, but I've been back and forth with them and town council about it, and I think it's fine. Uh, the highway session for the town academy was less well attended than expected, but very well received. Those who did attend filled up the time with questions and got all of them answered. The public safety session had 20 attendees, aside, aside from the people who were presenting. That's great. Uh, we've averaged 12 non-presenter attendees so far per session, which I think is great. Uh, I started a draft warrant for a fall special town meeting. And you might want to mention that there's none this week. There is no town academy this week. Right. Because of Halloween. Because, because of we're Halloween. all going to be on trick-or-treating. That's, That's right. right. Yes. Um, I have started a draft warrant for fall special town meeting, and we'll put that on the next agenda. I do not yet have an estimate as to when the cost estimate for the highway maintenance building will be ready, but I believe it may be ready by mid-November for an early December special town meeting. That sounds like you're cutting it close. That's that sort of is the raison d'etre of the whole December town meeting. Yes. So, like, we would not want to. So, you're going to have to schedule it before you have the numbers. That's what you're saying. No, no. I, that, 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 that's fine. That, that, that's three weeks. All we need is two to get the uh, the warrant out. So, yeah, it's. <clears throat> we may have it earlier. This is a conservative okay. estimate. Um, and then I already talked about the. Uh, speed bumps that was on the agenda so I, I had written that out so that's right. uh, okay. that's all that's I good. have thank you Tom concerns of our selectmen do we have concerns no. no concerns good okay mail what do we have in the mail okay we got a letter from um, Residents about a couple of trees that has been referred to the highway department. Tom, that's gonna you're gonna take care of that with uh, Is that Sack Road with Ron. No, no, no. It's, not, um, it's, it's way yeah, the road. And yeah, it's yeah. it's one of these cases where where when when people need work done to the trees, um, they ask the town to do it. And and uh, <laughs> right. Were these people? Like they might say yes. Time? I'm yeah. sorry? Were these people that were in last time? Ron, no, no. Ron will check Other it out. No. Okay. Ron, yeah, Ron will yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's we got something for adjoining uh, Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. If anybody's interested in that, there's a meeting. Meeting on November the 14th. Deerfield wants us to join that. Well, you know, uh, considering some of the things that are going coming out here west, that might be a good idea, but we tried to do that at the last town meeting and it failed. Yeah. And... Uh, the, the Berkshire Mosquito Control District is having a lot of financial trouble. There are, it, what you do is you enter into a bunch of financial commitments, and then if any towns drop out, the rest of the towns are left holding the bag, and that's what happened out in, out in Berkshire. There were a number of communities that did not sign on to this particular one, kind of waiting and seeing how it was developing. So. Uh, and it was it's going to be a town by town thing. You know, this area did not get hit as hard as Charlemont or south of us. Mm -hmm. So we're in a in a little pocket of. Um, so far, it hasn't hit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we can we can decide on that. So you can go to that meeting if you want. Yeah. Well, that's all. That's the way it is. You guys have a copy of this. No, they're just, okay. if you pass that around, that would be great. All right, next item, we have a letter from the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority giving us our um, quarterly report. 
uh, and the, the highlight of this is that uh, Conway has um, housing rehab of nine units, six complete, six under construction. Um, and that's, you know, a, a program that they, uh, they administer for us. And then this is, this is closing in on the end of this particular uh, cycle. They're going to ask for a six-month extension to see if they can do any more because they have some more funding left over. Yeah. So we have nine units here in Conway in process. Yes. Uh, they have been rehabbed during this cycle. Yes. So yes. some yes. of them are, are done. Are done. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Probably six are, six are complete and three are okay. under construction. We also got a um, an invitation from Light Path, forty uh, fifth anniversary celebration, Thursday, November twenty first, at Greenfield Community College dining facilities. Uh, so you guys can look at this if you're interested. Great. Okay, announcements. Have any announcements? Tomorrow is the beginning of the uh, Frontier Capital uh, uh, Committee that is going through the bond issue and what's on it. So what, what Chris, the gentleman that was here from Deerfield, was talking about, and that's going to affect that as well. So just when we thought everything was all settled, now somebody wants to make our parking lot improvements, green parking lot improvements. So now it's a whole new set of engineer studies and all this other stuff to consider. But okay. um, Permeable pavement. Yes, yes. I hope you were invited to that. I, I hope tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have permeable pavement at the up on the upper parking lot now. Um, the only oh uh, up of the baseball field. Yeah. Um, the only concern is that it it can't uh, it can't be sanded, and most places just salt their pavement now. But it can't be sanded because it, the sand settles into the mm -hmm. permeability Permeation thing and makes it. it Makes it interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next meeting is uh, Tuesday, uh, November the twelfth, uh, here at five. No, it's five. November five, 5 p.m. Five Tuesday, p. November twelfth, uh, at five p.m. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that um, we go into executive session. Do we have a roll call vote? And Philip. And yes, we and, and adjourn, yes. adjourn, and, and adjourn directly, we, and we adjourn from from yes, the yes. executive session. Yes, yes. yes.